when it comes to love and relationships, there are probably a few things you'd go back and tell your younger self to watch out for if you could. Like seeing the red flag when that one guy pointed out that he wasn't ready to settle. Gwinomte thinking it would make him settle. And now you're a single mother. But hey, with age comes wisdom. Today I share relationship advice I would give my younger self. I am an individual, marriage and CBT counselor, a let's fix it individual and couples counseling. Now, let me ask, what advice would you give your younger self before marriage? What you know now that you wish you knew then? Let me share, let, let us share more in the comment section. But as for me, here are a few things that I've learned along the way. I hope it helps some of you to make the right decision. Number one, before you get married, discuss polygamy, okay? Discuss religion, discuss bills, sexual expectations, chores, parenting styles, discuss childhood traumas, discuss financial and relationship issues. Do not miss any of these things. Discuss relationship expectations, discuss the past, discuss bucket lists, discuss debts, amabanja, what beliefs will be instilled in your kids etc etc because love alone is not enough number two do not ignore the red flags i will tell you this do not ignore the red flags in the beginning don't think that i take that as a point of they have anger issues you don't go like ah, ah he was having a bad day mm -mm. take that as a red flag go like okay this guy could be physically abusive don't ignore any of them number three Put God at the center of your love triangle. I don't know how I can overemphasize this. Put the intimacy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as top priority, both as an individual and both as a couple. So it's very important that you discuss what religion means to both of you. Number four, marry your friend. <laughs> or if you can, make your partner your friend. I will repeat this. Marry your friend. Lockdown, yeah, to the guy, the importance of this. I mean, if you were stuck with a person that you could not even have a conversation with, it was terrible. It was really terrible. Number five, what I've learned is don't lose yourself in a relationship. That your attention is so focused on the relationship or your partner that you don't even know who you are anymore. You don't identify yourself as an individual anymore. That you even lose your sense of self, right? Your identity and your life does not feel completely your own anymore. Don't get to that point in a relationship. You are an individual before you became a wife or a husband to somebody. Number six, another thing I've learned is to communicate openly and honestly. Our partners do not read minds, okay? They are not mind readers. So if you're dating <laughs> and your partner is always there ghosting you, please respect the dead and move on, okay? Number seven, different is not wrong. Many of us always go like, ah, we are not compatible. He's like this, I'm like that. That is not true. I can be different, but we always learn to compromise and find a middle ground. Different has never been wrong. Just learn how to understand one another. Things will smoothen out. Number eight, learn to fight fair. Don't fight to win or to keep score. And also remember that conflicts are inevitable in a relationship. Just recognize your role in solving it, okay? When you are in the honeymoon phase, it's very hard to, main, to, to imagine there will be arguments or that your partner has annoying traits and habits, but all of that awaits. Just ask yourself, how will you deal? A big piece about how to handle conflict and anger is knowing that it starts with yourself, okay? How you can manage your own anxiety. You need to learn to practice healthy ways of taking care of yourself and just make sure that you're in a good place to address whatever stresses are happening. You cannot have a conversation on a bad day. You cannot hold a, a productive conversation when you're in a bad mood, when you're angry. You just need to learn these things. You, from there, it's all about knowing how to come together and communicate together as a couple. People are very quick to respond and react. But what you need to do is stop, be present, and listen. If you feel like your emotions are up here, breathe, take a minute, and then come back to the table when you're both in a better mood to talk. Number nine, make time for date nights. I know Molo's have been to be a zongo, but there is something about making time for your partner to always talk about those things that you never get a chance to. You know, there is work, there is children, there is family. There is so many things that always take you away from one another but every time you make date night a priority time together a priority there will be a difference in your relationship have fun do the same things you did when you were dating 
love, play, <laughs> love. The goal is that quality time together and a few dedicated minutes a couple of times a week can go a long way. This is your partner. So find time to play and have fun with them. Number 10, be the spouse you want to have. Yes? Stop focusing on finding the right person and focus on becoming the right person. This is the number one secret that many of us don't know, but I hope you've learned that today. First become the right person and then you can find the right person. Number 11, show up as yourself and allow them to do the same, not your expectation of them. Stop trying to change people. Number 12, when people show you who they are, believe them, <laughs> stop making excuses, okay? When you're dating, the guy never calls, he never texts, He's busy. <laughs> when is he going to call? If he's not calling you now before marriage, do you expect that he's magically going to start doing these things after marriage? They show you who they are. Take that as a clear green light of, okay, so this is who my person is. But do not come complaining. Number 13, be selfless, but remember to love yourself first. Your self-love must always be stronger than your desire to be loved by other people. Please. Number 14. You are not a rehabilitation center for your badly behaved partner. It is not your job to fix, parent, change, or raise them. Many of us have forgotten that love is not a project. A responsibility. Someone is bad man. I will change him. I will change her. No, you cannot change a human being. Actually, that's, that's my number 15. You cannot change people. You either accept them for who they are or you start living life without them. Number 16. This is personal. Love does not pay bills. Please prioritize financial stability. Then to be danga komu umbera where there is no money. Okay? Abagamba and love is enough. Abana teba soma renti baba anja. Eh? There is nothing wrong with you prioritizing it. It doesn't have to be too much money. Nice center is good at basic materials. This is where denga was it. And also, now we're going to call it a center because it counts so much when you also have your own money. Number 17. Ladies, mm, I was coming to you. Make sure you have some financial stability before and after marriage please it pays to have your own money no be langa te just get just because sina agenda ga sina sente what will i do it helps mm. number 18 children change everything it requires commitment sacrifice and realization that you are no longer the center of your life so if you don't think you can take on that kind of huge responsibility Please don't have them. Don't bring them into the world. Number 19. Marriage gets boring and very hard sometimes. Okay? Our partners are not so easy to love sometimes. Especially when the spark has, you know, kind of disappeared. It's not always smiles and fun. You won't always feel in love, you know. You could be with the most perfect partner in the world for you and you're going to go through seasons where you feel like you're not aligned and you're not in love. That's where it's really important to be grounded in the values that you identify as a couple versus trying to follow the feelings that you think you're supposed to be having. Please take note of that. Number 21, enduring suffering eh, and the pain in the name of love and patience does not make you wife material. Many of us keep thinking, Enduring suffering doesn't make you worried, my wife material. Many of you like to compare using that, you know, as a measure of being a good wife. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know how, how that makes me a good wife. I mean, we are not meant to suffer. We are not born to suffer. Please stop using that as a measure. Okay, there is so much more to marriage than that. Anyway. Number 22, work on yourself first before you get into a relationship. You won't have a healthy relationship with someone else if you do not have a relationship, a healthy relationship with yourself. If you have a toxic relationship with yourself, you need to learn to make sure that you are balanced and centered so you know what you want and deserve. Working and loving yourself changes who you attract. That is no doubt. Okay? 
we will be back with more of the lessons that I have learned along the way. And I hope to hear more from you. Stay where you are. Welcome back. Now, my number 24 is a must <laughs> for all of us, ladies and gentlemen, especially ladies. We do not know how to pick our battles. My number 24 that I have learned in the years that I've been married is to pick your battles. Not everything has to be a fight. Eh? You need to be selective of the problems, arguments, and confrontations that you get involved in instead of fighting every problem. You know you save your time only for the things that matter. This means fighting the most important battles and letting go of the rest. Because, I mean, you've been married 20 years. Why are you still fighting about this 20 years later? Like, seriously. Because that is more important. Anyway, the battles differ for, for each one of us, but whatever works. Number 25, another lesson that I've learned. If you don't waste your life, sorry, number 25, do not waste your life and time in insecure relationships. You either trust each other 101% or you leave. If you are mistrustful of your partner, why are you marrying them? You're always going to doubt what they say. When they say they're somewhere, you won't believe them. So if you cannot trust one another, do not bother getting into a relationship. Number 26. If they care and love you, you will know. If they don't, you will be so confused. Eh? Because a healthy relationship gives you clarity. Like, you know where you stand. Eh? But every time there is none of that, I mean, it's, it's a clear sign. Like, And number 27, a lesson that I've learned is the people you allow in your life are very contagious. Okay? So you need to choose wisely and cut quickly. When a clown moves into your home, this is something I read somewhere. When a clown moves into your home, he does not become a king, okay? Your home becomes a circus. So you need to be aware of who you invite in your life and whom you give access to. No matter how in control you think you are, it only takes one clown. And I'd like to take this to our friends, I think, who like to play third party in our relationships. Be careful who gives you advice. Be careful who you go to to talk to about your partner. Be very, very careful about even the partners that you choose to bring into your life. Number 28. You can choose your husband and wife, but your children do not get to choose their mother or father. Okay? Choosing a good parent for your children is your responsibility and one that you should never, ever take lightly. Everything matters. From the genes right down to the family support system. So please, take this very seriously. Take time to know the person you are going to marry. Number 29. Your spouse is not going to complete you. Ever. It's really important for you to focus on you. Not in a selfish way. Not in a way that's disrespectful to your partner. Or that disregards your partner. But in a way where you understand that taking care of yourself is going to help you bring your best self to the relationship. That is how it works. You cannot pour from an empty cup, okay? Couples need to be able to have a balance of separateness and togetherness. Number 30, your partner's family relationships are very key. Be, be very wary of how your husband treats his family, how your wife treats her family, okay? You need to ask yourself, how did my partner get along with his family were they close or were they distant was there a conflict that information is very significant many of the themes in our family of origin repeat or resurface in our marriages number 31 when the going gets tough don't call it quits right away i had to learn this the hard way okay there is a mentality in our world today that if something is not working for you get rid of it but conflicts in marriage and relationships are opportunities to grow. Unless you're experiencing abuse, of course, or other intolerable behavior, please give yourself the chance to try to work things out. I have learned that the grass is not greener on the other side. The grass is always greener where you water it. Hard times always do come to pass. Number 32, 
I have learned that you do not marry potential. <laughs> I've put out a video about this in detail. Marry reality. Marry patterns. Character. Marry them for who they are right now. Don't expect your partner to change uh, whatever you tolerate while you're dating them right now will only multiply in marriage. Marriage never ever fixes dysfunction. It actually reveals more of it. Number 33, this is important. Eh? Men, eh? please listen. <laughs> Women, how are things in the bedroom? Yes, some <laughs> couples may choose to wait after marriage until they are married before coming sexually intimate. But even in those cases, it's very important to have communication and mutual understanding about what the role of sex will be expected to play in a marriage. For some of us, sex is very important. I've seen people leave their marriages because of sex. Ah, she only gives me once a week. What do I got to call here? Four times a week? Did you discuss this? Is she okay with it? <laughs> On the moon too. Eh? Like, it's, it's very important. Okay, for example, what happens if the sex drive changes? Okay? What's going to happen? Eh? Our hormones come into play. Eh? Whether because of the novelty you're wearing off or because one partner is facing a physical or health changes. What are each partner's attitudes about pornography? How adventurous are you? I want to the commissionary. Eh? Five years. Hmm? Honestly, do you ever talk about these things? Does one partner withhold sex as a form of power? Women, we like to do this. Hmm? And then you withhold sex from your partner. But how does this help? Honestly, when sex becomes a problem in and of itself, it's important to communicate about it. Okay? I would like to ask, how often do you initiate? How often do you initiate? Men, yeah, when they initiate, how often do you, you know, also murido. Like these are very, very important things to discuss. But sadly, because it can be a difficult topic, sometimes that never happens until long after the early warning signs of trouble are there. And then it becomes even much harder to resolve. So another lesson about sex. Sex does not mean love. Eh? For many of us who give in hoping, these men will love us when we do. Please think again. Eh? Some of us have learned the hard way. Ah, let me sleep with him. He will love me. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything for some men. So anyway, another thing that I've learned is chores. Chores, chores, chores. Emilimo. Please discuss your expectations of how the household will be maintained. Do you split housework? Amen. No, this, this is actually a thing. For us in Islam, Mbaka Sala Salama, he used to help his wives, you know, before he went to prayer and all that. So it's important we speak about it. I know men who go like, You know, you talk about these things before you get married because you don't want your woman to become a servant, a glorified servant. So have these conversations. Are you getting a maid? Are you going to be helping out? Oh, is your wife going to be, like I said, a glorified servant? Last but not least, just because your friends or relatives are doing it, doesn't mean you have to. We always make this mistake because society has taught us how marriage should be, how relationships should be. So we start to copy and paste. That usually never works. In my private practice, I tell newlywed couples or in premarital counseling that, do what works for you. Marriage, children are a natural progression, okay? Don't rush it just because everyone else is doing it. And finally, don't forget that when you're choosing a partner, you need to remember that they have the ability to affect everything in your life. I'm sure we've had people who became suicidal just because their partner cheated, just because Yazari Wero, just because Yamsi Gobrade. Your partners can affect your mental health, peace of mind, the love inside of you, your happiness, how you get through tragedies, how your children are going to be raised, etc. You're choosing a lot of things, including your part parenting partner. Can they really help you raise children the right way? They're going to deeply influence your children. These are your eating companions, your retirement friend. I guess what I'm trying to say is, please choose wisely. Don't forget to donate to our NGO, Educate an Orphan, just 5,000 to keep an orphan in school, and Sham Cares Foundation that helps empower women, help communities in immediate need, just by paying 10,000. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.